Now, when it comes to the um, moon entering Libra, we're going to start it off for Aries, Sun, Moon, and Senses. You guys are going to be basically getting opposed. We're going to figure out the areas we need to start planting seeds at. <clears throat> and we're also going to basically get into all the spectrums of basically where we need to correlate and correspond when it comes to um, the waxing phase. So now we're going to start it off with Aries, Sun, Moon, and Senses. What are the, 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 um, what are the new seeds that you need to start planting when it comes to the um, moon and Libra? Tomorrow, or every summer, or the seeds you should. I right, we got two cards, so start playing seeds towards visions dealing with your environment and your surroundings. So, you need to come up with a new way of feeling and seeing about your environment and your surroundings. You also need to start, you know, utilizing the page of swords, aka using the, the uh, Libra energies, and start creating new ways to create new ways to relate when it comes to yourself or home, family, and privacy. <clears throat> That's um, the first card. Now, we're gonna also see. The um, what, what's going to be opposing you? Because all Aries, some of the citizens, you guys are going to be the opposers, or you're going to be manifesting circumstances, situations, the people, places, and things opposing you tomorrow, good or bad. Now, we're going to see what are the oppositions for all Aries, some of the citizens with the Mercury and Libra tomorrow. What are the oppositions? Who are going to be opposing you? What's going to be opposing you? And we're going to basically correspond with those energies and go up most personally. So, we got the Knight of Swords. So, Pete, you so so watch out. You need to either go within your inside yourself, do shadow work, or you're gonna have individuals that's talking about you behind the scenes. And we're gonna see the mind state that you need to be in, aka harnessing Mercury and Libra. How can you harness Mercury and Libra to correlate with this moon and Libra energies? Being that, how can you utilize that conjunction, that power? All right, boom, yeah, it's, it's set it said it. So, you're gonna utilize the magician card, aka. Use your magic, mental magic. So if you ain't got, this is utilizing mental magic during this time. So utilize your powers, your mind, your intellect, and focus on you in that perspective. And also, you, you need to develop a relationship because you got um, two of these cards. So this is add up, equates to seven. So you need to come up with a new way of paying attention towards focusing your mind, your ideas on things that no longer serve you. Clean it up a little bit so you can kind of like be moving forward with a purpose. So we got three, <coughs> four. 10, 11, 12, 34, 15. So basically, you're dealing with a sun, moon, sun, and Virgo, or you need to utilize the sun and Virgo energies and um, keep utilizing the moon and Virgo energies, the new moon energies, to make sure you know you get your one, two going. Everything can basically be moving forward and, of course, accordingly. Now, we're about to get into you, Taurus, sun, moon, the sentences. You guys are going to be going through misunderstandings tomorrow. So we're going to basically see the misunderstandings that's going to correlate with you guys and how it could basically go in your, in your favors. Now, Venus is on your side, but we're going to see how it's going to play out for you. Now, all Taurus, some of the symptoms, you guys are going to be going through in conjunction. Now, we're going to see where the in conjunction is going to be coming from. But most importantly, we're going to see where you need to start playing new new seeds when it comes to the new moon and Libra for all Taurus, Taurus, some of the symptoms. So, all Taurus, some of the symptoms. What are the new seeds you need to start correlating? Of course, getting ready and prepared for all the stations. With this new moon, with this moon and Libra. <clears throat> you need to start planting seeds towards utilizing your mind and starting valuing the right people, places, and things in the right circumstances, situations when it comes to this correlation. Because you basically got um, Libra in your sixth house. So basically, you need to start correlating. You need to start valuing your mind during this time. You need to like do some shadow work. You need to basically clear your mind so you can have the right mentalities that you can start valuing. Now, we're going to see where I got the two of swords. And we're going to also see who or what is going to be basically opposing you tomorrow when it comes to Jupiter and the Aries and Chiron and the Aries with the moon and Libra. What's going to be opposing you tomorrow? Someone or something. Who's going to be opposing you? What's going to be opposing you? Or Taurus, some moon, and What What energies you're going to be basically getting opposed by? Oh, shit. You're going to be getting opposed by the Mars and Pluto energies. AKA, you're going to be getting opposed by ideas or structure that you kind of like are hanging on to. That's like that. You're gonna be basically getting opposed by death. Things that you're sticking on to, hanging on to, and not trying to let go. So you need to let the meat off the bones. That means you're stuck into a routine or a pattern at the moment. Taurus, I'm on the sentences. We're gonna see what, why you're stuck into that routine pattern. We're also gonna see how you can utilize the Mercury and Libra energies <coughs> to go in your favors with the Moon and Libra for the moment for you. All right, boom. Got the Nine of Swords. So what you need to be doing is expanding your mind. No matter, expanding your mind from darkness, expanding your mind from backstabbers, expanding your mind from negativity, expanding your, and um, stop going to sleep crying and like, <coughs> for me, stop going to sleep with a heart, with a heavy mind, with a heavy heart, for me. 
Make sure them, make sure it's tears of joy and not tears of um, unjoy. And right, we're gonna add this up. 11, 15. You gotta want to sum on the Virgo. You need to utilize the Virgo energies to get organized, consistent, practical. So that means basically you need to start continuing to start playing good seeds when it comes to your fifth house and Virgo. Yeah, but your fifth house being there, actually. Yeah, but your fifth house being the Virgo, you need to continue to start playing good seeds. So this way when you get into Libra, you'll be able to keep waxing, keep making that thing germinate, and of course make sure that um the waxing phase keep expanding. So you need to focus on paying attention <coughs> towards um <coughs> getting that spectrum taken care of <coughs> and situated. <coughs> now we're about to get into you Gemini some on this We're gonna see what's up with you guys. You guys um you guys got Libra in your fifth house. Yeah, you got Libra in your fifth house. Now, Gemini, some on the sentences, we're going to see what's going on for you guys. The areas where you need to start planting new seeds at when it comes to the um, Libra being in the fifth house. And also, <coughs> how the new moon is going to basically still got to utilize this new moon energy. We're going to see what's up with the moon and Libra for all Gemini, some on the sentences. Oh, shit. God damn. <coughs> I don't know what's going on now, man. All right, so we got the Ten of Swords. So, Gemini, some on the sentences, you're dealing with some backstabbers. You're dealing with people, places, and things that's talking behind your back. Or you're dealing with circumstances and situations of dealing with some whole lot of transformation. AKA, you're holding a whole lot of weight behind you. Or you're going to be manifesting a whole lot of weight. So, the new seeds that you need to be basically starting to plan on, AKA, stay down until you come up. Utilize all the stores and all the darkness and all the dark clouds. And pretty much get out of that circumstance situation. Because this is what? The Pluto card? So, you no know Mars is in, um, is in Gemini. You know, Pluto also. <clears throat> it's basically being controlled by our Mars, so yeah, it makes sense why we got that card. For our Gemini, some of the synthesis. Now we're gonna see where I got that card, and we're gonna see where, who, or who is opposing you, what's opposing you, and what oppositions you're gonna be basically dealing with with that um, Jupiter and Aries and Chiron and Aries for all Gemini, some, some of the synthesis. What are the oppositions you're gonna be basically dealing with? <clears throat> you're, gonna be dealing with you're gonna be getting hit with that 180. So the opposition is going to basically be coming from pent up emotions or pent up energies. Did I want someone or something? So someone or something that got pent up energies or you got pent up energies, Gemini. On that, that cup is full. So the Knight of Cups. So the Knight of Cups, you need to um, sit with your feelings, emotions, do some shadow work. <coughs> so you can clear out those oppositions and those oppositions won't be too strong. And because we all want to get home tomorrow. We don't want to just basically go out and not come back home. We want to get home. That's on the spiritual level or the physical level and all levels. And we're going to see where I got the Knight of Cups. And we're going to see how you can utilize and harness Mercury and Libra, which is going to basically bring a conjunction your way, and how you can correlate with those energies. Or, um, also, we're going to see how you can utilize the Grand Trine tomorrow. Tell me. So the door is okay. All right, we got, oh, we got two cards. All right, so we got the, we got the Magician card, <coughs> a.k.a. utilizing the energies for yourself. And we got the King of Wands. Giving birth to new passions and new visions and grand support in that area. Now, um, we're going to add this up. <coughs> so, we got three. Well, we're going to add this up. Um, so, you're dealing with a Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Ascendant. Or you need to utilize the stay down until you come up energies. Or utilize the Cap Pluto and Capricorn energy to basically get through this correspondence. Or also, you could be dealing with Aries or uh, Sagittarius. Most importantly, you did it with a Capricorn someone in the center. So you basically need to make um, take full power control, create space and take full power control. <coughs> and, uh, next is Cancer someone in the center. Okay, you got Cancer someone in the sentences. I'm about to get into you guys real fast. See how this um, Moon and Libra is going to be affecting you. Now, you guys are going to be going through learning phases. So this is going to be good for me. A square, a square of energies. So you're going to see what you need to be basically learning. For um, cancer, some of the seeds, which are the seeds that you need to learn how to plant the new moon being in Libra <coughs> or the moon in Libra in general. For all cancer, some of the seeds. All right, so you need to start planting. Learn how to plant seeds when it comes to your environment, your surroundings. Make sure that your environment is fulfilled when it comes to your emotional, your emotional um, support when it comes to emotionally expressing yourself when it comes to your environment, your siblings, your neighbors, your friends. Also, learn how to, you know, hold on to your, to your status, your, your money, and your um, resources. Also, learn how to um, feel, feel free in your environment. So, you're dealing with a whole lot of um, tenant. You're dealing with a Capricorn energy. A whole lot of Capricorn energy. You're dealing with a Capricorn, someone said, or oh, Cancer, someone said you guys are being opposed. Right, well, we're going to see why you're being opposed. 
who's opposed to you, what's opposed to you. You're gonna see how the um, Jupiter, the Aries energy, the Chiron Aries is gonna basically affect you tomorrow when it comes to that 180. Or uh, cancel some of the sentences. How, how are you being opposed? <clears throat> All right. So the opposition is basically coming from your work, your health, your routines, the things that you pretty much are conducting yourself on a day on a day to day basis. So whatever you're paying attention to, is you need to start stop paying attention to all that because that's bad energy. Start transform that vision. Start paying attention to all the things that's gonna start growing. Feel me? And that's gonna correlate with you having um yeah, that's gonna correlate with you need to start having to take responsibilities on what you are uh, paying attention to and what you give your energy to. So, so it's all about balance and equilibrium at this point for you uh, cancer some of the sentences. Now we're gonna see how you can utilize the Grand Air Trine and of course the Mercury and Libra energy to go in your favor tomorrow with this Grand Air Trine is guy that you're gonna basically be dealing with for a few days. Let me go about to get to the cancer some of the sentences see what's up with you guys. <clears throat> so use your strength, aka spend time towards your ideas and your way of thinking and communicating and relating. Let me. All right, now we're gonna add this up. So we did it with a sun moon and a Libra, or you need to utilize the moon and Libra energies and the Mercury and Libra energies to pretty much be on the on your one and two. We're gonna add it up and make sure that we got four, seven, ten, sixteen, twenty-one, twenty-four. Wait, hold on. <clears throat> we got eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So we did them with the sun moon in the Virgo. Um, so you need to utilize the Virgo and the Libra energies. If the sun is going to be a Virgo, and of course, Libra falls a Virgo. So yeah, <coughs> you have to make sure. Yeah, you need to utilize the um, Virgo energies, aka sextile opportunities. So take any of these opportunities. You know, you be at. Everybody get to see Leo, sun moon, and and see where it's headed for you guys tomorrow. Now, um, we're about to get into you, Cancer, someone, I mean, Leo, someone, and Sinister. So, all Leo, someone, and Sinister, you guys are going to be dealing with opportunities and sex house. But also, you're going to be basically dealing with a, um, up and down. You're going to be dealing with some ups and downs tomorrow, too, when it comes to your environment, your surroundings, your siblings, your neighbors, your friends, and the things that you are familiar with. <coughs> be careful on the road, too. All Leo, someone, and Sinister. Now, we're going to see areas where you need to start planting new seeds at. All um, Leo, someone, and Sinister. The location that you need to start playing new seeds. <coughs> the moon and Libra. Plant seeds towards your um you're looking at the bigger picture when it comes to your money, your resources, and your material. Nine of Pentacles. So yeah, you need to expand your outlook on your money and your resources, your material on the time. We're gonna see who oppose who's opposing you and what's opposing you. But of course you'll be getting opposed from your ninth house. So that means you need to utilize your ninth house a little bit too. <coughs> we'll go off of that. I do with that juice. So we're gonna see how Jupiter and Aries, the Chiron and Aries is gonna be opposing you. Oh shit. Oh shit. Alright, so Leo someone the sentences. <coughs> it's gonna be opposing you when it comes to your outlook on things, when it comes to your spirituality, aka your spiritual purposes. So that means you're gonna be going to a tower card tomorrow, which means you're gonna be tearing down, building up. For me, so this is like the Aries card. So you're gonna be going through, gonna be doing some extreme energy, you're gonna be going through some extreme ups and downs tomorrow, and I just said. Leo falls in Libra, so you're going to be going to some ups and downs and all, so yeah, yeah. You're going to see where I got this card, Leos. You're going to also see <coughs> how you can utilize <coughs> the Grand Air Trine <coughs> and the Mercury and Libra energies to go in your favors for all Leo's summer and All right, so you got your card, so you need to utilize some Saturn and Aquarius energies. You need to utilize some Leo energies, Venus and Leo energies. And of course, you need to utilize the Mars and Gemini energies as well, aka all these energies. Spend time in these things too. <coughs> I'm gonna add this up 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 24. So you're dealing with a summer with the Leo, I mean Virgo. You need to utilize the Virgo energies, which is your um, second house. AKA, you need to keep playing the good seeds towards the new moon and being a Leo, new moon being in Virgo right now. Keep playing good seeds in the moon, moon being in Virgo right now when you come to your second house. Stay down until you come up and then when you get into the moon and Libra, <coughs> keep moving on forward when you come to your third house. So the second house, how you can relate towards the things you value you know, and the seeds you're planting right now, that will basically make its way towards your third house, your environment, your surroundings, and things of that perspective. So keep playing good seeds. I mean, now we're about to get into uh, <coughs> Virgo someone in the See what the blunt is headed for you guys. Or, um, Virgo, someone in the sentences about to get into the guys right now. 
see with the effects, uh, snap effects on you. Now, when it comes to Virgo Summer Lessons, you guys are going to basically be dead with your, um, you're going to see the areas and locations where you can start utilizing, planting new seeds towards the moon and Libra for all Virgo Summer Lessons. You have an area and location that you need to start harmonizing and, of course, start bringing peace and good and unbalanced in that area. But you got it in your second house, <coughs> so we're going to see where the spot was heading for, for, for your second house. For you guys, the second house, how that's going to correspond. All right, so basically, you already know what it's hitting for. You got the five of cups, so you're dealing with a whole lot of deep feelings and emotions. You're hanging on to a whole lot of deep feelings and emotions. You're hanging on to a whole lot of dirt, dirty feelings and emotions and negative feelings and emotions. Now, your second house in Libra is going to basically bring that peace, harmony, and balance, but also it falls there in the area and location as well, too. So it's going to get us some ups and downs some more, bro, some of the senses. <clears throat> but how you, if you can stay down until you come up, you'll be in the right frequencies and right vibrations and energies to keep moving forward. Now we're going to see why you got the five of cups. We're going to see who or what's opposing you and how that's going to correlate for Virgo some of the senses. What's opposing you? Who's opposing you? And uh, we got two cards. All right, so you, you, you're, you're dealing with a whole lot of opposing energies receiving grants by receiving grant support. So... Be open to be open to, to um, receiving ideas tomorrow. AKA you're gonna have a grand charm. AKA receiving grand support when it comes to ideas and communications, and decipher which information or ideas and communication that you're gonna kind of like keep with you and let go. <clears throat> you also got the hierophant cards. You also did it with a whole lot of um, deep feelings and emotions right now from someone or something. Either um, something that someone or something that you kind of like or stuck or fixated with at the moment. That's what you're kind of like dealing with. You're dealing with a whole lot of emotional currents right now. Uh, Virgo Summer and Now we're going to see how you can harness the Grand Air Trine and all that and utilize the Mercury and Libra energies to play in your favor the most. Virgo Summer and Alright, cool. We got some cards. Alright, cool. We got some cards. <coughs> so that means you need to stand firm on our ideas or release any baggage that's, cling that's clinging onto your mind. You also need to utilize the nine of cups, aka look at the bigger picture when it comes to expanding your emotional currents and your, and your feelings and emotions on things. And you also got the four of swords, <coughs> four of cups. So that means you basically need to clear your mind and figure out which feeling and emotion and structure that you can utilize and build on and shape up. And you also got the seven of swords. So you're basically dealing with some circumstance situation of getting your mind wiped away or someone or something still in your mind or your ideas. You got the lovers card, aka the card of the day. So that means you basically need to um, pay attention towards, you know, giving your time and your energy towards things that's going to grow, aka stuff And we're going to add this up and see the kind of energies and zodiac signs you're dealing with for Virgos. You're dealing with a Scorpio, someone that's in there. You're going to be getting opposed by your eighth house. So that means you need to stay down until you come up or utilize some form of structure and system. So you're good. So Libra, someone in the you guys are going to be basically dealing with a conjunction. Now, this conjunction is going to place you into a circumstance situation that with power. So, what comes with a whole lot of power comes with a whole lot of responsibilities. Now, you need to be focusing on yourself, focusing on how you can relate and create peace and harmony and balance when it comes to the personal individual that's in your personal space and your personal location. Now, um, <clears throat> we're going to see areas where you need to go ahead and, of course, start planting seeds and come to your first house for all these some of the sentences. You're going to be basically the prime example, aka you're going to be the one on, that's on stage for these two days. So start, start spending time and putting time and energy work towards building on your um, your money, your resources, and your material. I mean, your money matters, your money worth. I mean, that's your focus right now. Building your projects on your money, your resources, and your material. And we're going to see why you got the eight of pentacles. And we're going to basically see who or what supposing you when it comes to Jupiter and Aries and Cairo and Aries, aka traumas and mistakes. We're going to basically see what it's hitting for when it comes to that space and location for all um, Libra, Sun, and services. <clears throat> Who's opposing you? What's opposing you when it comes to that energy? I bet. So you got the Empress card, a.k.a. the Venus card. So someone or something that's in your environment or your surroundings is basically going to be opposing you at the moment. So be aware of that. That means you're going to either be a um, Taurus or a Aquarius. You me? <laughs> for good or for worse. Now, we're going to basically see why you got that card, and we're going to basically see how you can utilize the Grand Air Trine and also utilize Mercury and Libra to help you out with the moon being Libra, a.k.a. that conjunction, that power. And we're going to basically see how that's going to correlate for Libra somewhere in the sentences and how you can basically utilize that power to basically go in your favor. So we got a whole lot of things going on here. Knight of Pentacles. Stay down until you come up when it comes to working on your money and your resources. 
got the seven of cups. That means you're going to be basically in la-la land when it comes to your um, mentalities and your feelings and emotions about things. And of course, you need to give your grand support when it comes to your emotional connections on things and people, places, and things. You also got the nine of swords. So stay down until you come up when it comes to your ideas and your, and your intellect. And also got that high priest. So you need to basically go with inside yourself, a.k.a. Listen, listen to your intuition. And you got the three of cups. So basically, you need to um, give your grand support when it comes to your emotional connections and your emotional environment, your surroundings, your siblings, your neighbors, your friends, and people, this is the thing that you kind of like look with. Now we're going to add all the stuff and see what kind of energy you basically deal with or leave with some of the sentences. Now, Libras, if you're dealing with a sun moon ascendant, um, sun moon ascendant, Sagittarius, so you need to utilize the Jupiter energies, the ninth house energies, or the Sagittarius energies to look at the bigger picture when it comes to expanding your experiences, your meanings, your reasons, your purposes, your relationships. Now, we're going to basically get you great with you. Now, we're about to get to you, Scorpio, sun moon ascendant, so you're going to basically see what is going on for you guys. You guys are going to be basically dealing with a whole lot of instruments, of course. Now, Scorpio, sun moon ascendant, we are going to see the areas and locations how you can utilize the moon and Libra and start planting good seeds, aka planting new seeds. Because we're waxing right now, so we need to be waxing. We need to put a whole lot of time and energy towards your dreams, your fantasies, your imaginations. Because you got to heal 12 hours of Libra. Now we're going to see what it's headed for when it comes to that area and location for all Scorpio and moon and Ascendants for the moon and Libra right now. The areas and locations where you need to go ahead and before start planting those seeds, start generating those seeds, start reacting and responding towards those seeds. Now, AKA, you got the Eight of Cups. So that means you're spending a whole lot of time and emotional time and currents towards cups being filled on that side, that side. But of course, you don't want to put yourself into a circumstance or location of basically leaving these cups that's filled. You basically want to take these cups with you. But of course, when you're moving on to another path and location, you can't bring that weight with you. Or you can't basically bring things that you spent with you. You got to be light as a feather, basically go into that um, new hole, new location to basically have new clairvoyance and new energy. That moon is full. That moon right there needs waxing. So you need to start waxing your time and your energy towards. You need to spend your time with this. Uh, spend your time with your dreams, fantasies, imaginations, aka your subconscious. Go with inside yourself. We're gonna see why you got the eight of cups. And we're gonna see who or what's opposing you or what's stopping you. Because <clears throat> someone or something is, is gonna oppose you or stop you. And you can see how you can utilize your opposition to basically go in your faith. Now, basically. You're dealing with some um you you got the nine you got the moon card so you're dealing with some whole out of, whole lot of experiences aka whole lot of experiences that you have with someone or experiences in general is kind of like stopping good or bad or yeah or you could be stopping you throwing this out with the page of swords because this is a um this is focusing on someone else aka focusing on you and you got the um the emperor card so that means you either either you stopping yourself because this is also the scorpio card aka the mars card the pluto card now we're going to see why you got these cards and we're going to see how you can utilize the Grand Air Trine and the Moon and Libra and Mercury and Libra energies to really much you to start focusing on your mentality and start harnessing these energies and playing good teams. <coughs> yeah, we're going, to, we're, going to have to, we're going to have to go ahead and play it. We've got the Seven of Coins, so stop worrying. We've got the Nine of, of Wands, so, um, leave, leave the porch, the universe got you. Five of swords, someone stealing your ideas. Five of wands, you're dealing with a whole lot of emotional conflict. <clears throat> you're also dealing with a whole lot of ups and downs. The sun falls on you. Got the ace of wands, so you need to create your own passions. You're also going through a whole lot of deep transformation death. You're also dealing with a whole lot of um, four of wands, building new visions. And of course, you got the hermit card. So you got a full moon right here, and you also got a whole lot of baggage. You're going to see why you got. You're going to add all these cards up and get the number of who you're dealing with. You dropped a bomb on me, baby. I leave it. You dealing with a Virgo someone in Sydney. And of course, you're dealing with the, um, the fall. So you're dealing with some whole lot of ups and downs. Now, when, we, when it comes to the Sagittarius someone in Sydney, you guys are going to have opportunities. And you're also, you're also going to be getting opposed by um, this Grand Air Trine, a.k.a. Mars and Gemini. So we're going to basically run that down and see what's up now. Oh, damn. <clears throat> cards, cards are already falling up. God damn, I didn't even get, get to the spectrums. Yeah, it's all about balance. Yeah, you know it's all balance right now. But um, we're about to get it. Oh, yeah, it makes sense. Because um, you're going to be getting exalted by Libra energies. When it comes to your moon, your reactions, how you feel, and your ideas and your way of communicating. Now, we're going to see what's up with the moon and Libra. The seeds, new seeds that you can kind of like hard and start harnessing and playing for all Sagittarius. Some of the seeds is a new seed. You need to go ahead and forward, start playing with the moon, being a Libra, or Sagittarius. Some of the seeds. The seeds you need to start playing. 
you can start planting some seeds. You got to plant some seeds. I mean, the grass is always going to be green when you plant the seeds. For me, just like that, just take that phrase. I basically got the tower card. So with the tower card, you're going through some whole lot of ups and downs. Basically, you need to transform some shit, aka you need to separate from your body and go with the size of yourself. You got the seven, you got the tower card. Also, you're spending a whole lot of time into your visions and passions. You're spending a whole lot of time into some visions and passions right now. You're going to see why you got those cards. And we're going to see what's supposed to move or who was supposed to move or who's bringing that tower card and who's bringing those eight of wands your way. And how the Jupiter and the Aries and the Chiron and the Aries are going to be affecting you when you consider oppositions. Where that card at? All right, cool. So basically, get that with a Capricorn, someone ascending that's opposing you at the moment. <coughs> You got the seven of pentacles, so you're pretty much in a circumstance situation of worrying about like, dang, you're dealing a whole lot of seven energies. They were over worrying a lot when it comes to looking at the bigger picture, when it comes to your money, your resources, and of course your material. Look at the bigger picture. The universe and the stars work in mysterious ways. So if you're worrying about how things is coming into a specific outlook, it's not gonna go in that favor. You gotta expand and broaden that perspective. Now we're gonna see how you can utilize the Grand Air Trine and how you can utilize the Mercury and Libra energies to go ahead and of course Keep working with these seeds that you're planting. For all the Sagittarius, some of the Simpsons. Alright. <clears throat> Let's see what's good. What it's hitting for. So basically, you need to utilize the Ace of Swords. Create new ideas. Come up with a new idea. And start pushing that out. Now, um, 14, 19, 20, 19, 22, 22. So you're dealing with a someone sitting in Leo. Or you need to utilize the Venus and Leo energies. Which is your trying, your gift. You go ahead and, of course... Express that for me. Just use that energies and be very big hearted on this side. You got Leo in your ninth house, so that means you just need to be looking at the bigger picture. You got it. I'm about to get into you, um, Capricorn, someone in the sentence. You guys are going to be basically going to learn aspects, aka squares. So you're going to have to go through a learning phase. If you don't, even though it's going to be conflict in that area, you just got to learn it. I learn a lot. Now, when it comes to you, uh, Capricorn, someone in the sentences, you guys are going to be learning, learning life. So we're going to see what you're going to be learning, but you're also going to be going to the extremes, too. Reacting extremely and taking actions extremely and personally going to the extremes because you're so Libra. Now, we're going to see what it's hitting for. For all you um, Capricorn Summer Sentences, what are the new seeds you need to go ahead and start reacting and responding to and start planting? All right, we got some damn cats. That card, no energy. So you need to spend your time towards planting seeds, Capricorn Summer Sentences. You also need to utilize your environment, your surroundings, and the people, places, and things that's in it, because you love doing that. You also basically need to look at the bigger picture when it comes to expanding your um, growth, when it comes to money, resources, and material. And also, you got the tower card, which is Pluto and Capricorn. So you need to transform it, of course, transform something on a bigger on a, on a bigger picture. Look at the bigger picture. I'm going to see why I got these cards. I'm going to see who's opposing you and what's opposing you for Capricorn, some of the senses. With the moon entering Libra. Who's opposing you and what's opposing you? Someone or something is opposing you. Alright, Knight of Wands. So you're dealing with some behind the scenes, aka visions or some spirits. That's kind of like, you know, not on your, on your side at the moment. What you need to do is some shadow work, aka you need to go with inside of yourself and transform everything. Transform all everything that's stopping. Or you just basically you just need to go inside yourself to receive the right visions and the right spirits, aka the spirits from inside you. Now we also gonna basically see <clears throat> where you got those cards. We're gonna see how you can use the Grand Air Trine to go in your favor. Also with the Mercury and Libra energy to go in your favor as well for Capricorn separate synthesis. So basically, stand firm and harness all the ideas when it comes to money, resources, and materials. So you need to be focused on your money. And of course, this, you got Libra in the tenth house. Your status and your reputation basically getting um getting a prize winner on it. So um you got night for twelve. So that adds up to three. You got um, the star, 18, 21, 24, 28, 35, 42. So you're going to go to someone who's in the Virgo. Damn, a whole lot of Virgos. Virgo, Virgo's energy is really in effect. So you need to utilize the Virgo energies, a.k.a. Sun and Virgo. And still you keep using the new, new, the new moon and Virgo energy to keep playing good seeds. You got Virgo in your ninth house, so keep looking at the bigger picture when it comes to expanding, expanding, and keep fulfilling that um that moon because it's, you know, we still got the new moon in Virgo right now. But tomorrow when the moon gets Libra, 6 a.m., you can start correlating and relating. Before that, when the moon gets into the three degrees, birth, life, death, transformation. I just got you out the belly. 
Now, when we're about to get into the Aquarius Sun, Moon, and Synthesis, you guys are going to be basically dealing with a Tron, a GIF. So, we're going to see what this GIF hit for, for, you, for you guys. Now, all Aquarius Sun, Moon, and Synthesis, you guys are also going to be basically going to the extremes a little, just a little bit. Because you're ruled by Saturn. Now, we're going to see what's up with Aquarius Sun, Moon, and Synthesis, how your ninth house is going to be basically being affected with this Moon and Libra, and of course, the areas and location you need to start playing seeds. Now, Aquarius Sun, Moon, and Synthesis. You got a whole lot of shit on your, you got a whole lot of weight on your shoulders, aka you need to start letting go of some things. So you still got, um, got the moon, and you got the moon in Virgo right now with the new moon in Virgo, so you need to basically stay down until you come up before you, you, you need to learn how to let go of something. You're going to be full into a whole lot of responsibilities. That grand air try is going to hit you hard tomorrow. It's going to hit you. You'll be like, hey, this responsibility, take this responsibility, feel me? You're going to be, that's what I, I just, I just said that. Try not to go to the extremes. And this is the extremes right here, because you're ruled by Saturn. Now, we're going to see why I got the 10 of um, wands, and we're going to see who's opposing you, what's opposing you, for all career some of your tendencies. Because you're basically going to be getting opposed when it comes to your environment, your surroundings, and your siblings, your neighbors are going to oppose you, for all career some of your Or you're going to be receiving or opposing energy from, from them. <clears throat> so, got the King of Cups. So, you could be the one that's opposing. AKA, you giving off grand support when it comes to your emotional cup, AKA, your emotional feelings on your emotion. Your emotional feelings and emotions about something. So, let's put you into the perspective of you could be the one that's supposed to be the one that's for me. And how you could be doing that is when it comes to your emotions, how you feel about things, or what you're basically been stagnating yourself with, or getting stuck into a routine with. We're going to see why you got the King of Cups, and we're going to also basically see. Um, how you can utilize the grand air try tomorrow and how you can utilize the mercury. Damn, the cause is just curse. That's why they call you out of that's why they call you out of the know what it was because it's like I I it's like I didn't even get a chance to basically say what I had to say and just call just flip right out. You feel me? I know everything, huh? So you basically need to utilize the um the Emperor card, aka structuring, standing on business, aka Saturn and the Curse. And um we got um Mars and Gemini and we also got um the moon in Libra and the Mercury in Libra, so stand on business and of course add that when it comes to playing seeds, when it comes to the air. So it's all about using the air at the moment and on a little bit of earth too. You're going to add this up 10, 14, 15, 20, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. So you're dealing with a summer within that phrase, or just, just be yourself. Be yourself. And then we're going to make sure this is right too. Kings is uh, 14, so that's 5. 20, 25, 26, 36, 7, 38, 39, 40, so. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Yeah, I was right. The career is, the career is called, the career is called. Now, we're about to get into you. Pisces, some more sentences. Last but not least, you guys are going to be basically receiving, receiving a whole lot of extreme energies when it comes to your eighth house. Last but not least, Pisces. Now, all Pisces symbol in the sentences, you guys are going to be basically acting, reacting, and personally expressing yourself in a very in conjunction, misunderstanding, 150 kind of perspective. You're going to be manifesting this from others, or you're going to be pushing off these energies. Now, the focus point is going to basically be your eighth house, aka stay down until you come up with all Pisces symbol in the sentences. Now, we're going to see what the moon and Libra got to say for um, Pisces symbol in the sentences, which you need to be reacting, responding to. And the seeds that you basically need to start playing so you can be on the right spectrum. <clears throat> now, you got the Hermit card, aka the Virgo card. So, you're being opposed right now by a whole lot of experiences in life, aka these experiences putting into circumstances, situation of being afraid or separating or running from something. Try not to be running from nothing during the sun. You know what I mean? Don't run from nothing or no one. You better basically stand and fight. So, you're basically dealing with a whole lot of oppositions right now for, for the Hermit card. Now, we're going to see why you got the Hermit card. Also, the Hermit card is basically telling you, aka, stay down until you come up, because you got the um, Libra in your eighth house, so stay down until you come up. We're going to see why you got the Hermit card, and we're going to see who's opposing you and what's opposing you when it comes to Jupiter and Aries and Chiron and Aries and the mistakes that can basically be popping up on the sun, the mistakes that you're kind of like making. Damn. I see this mutable, mutable water. Y'all mutable, mutable all the way to place. All right, now. Hold on. No, basically, good. Yeah. Now, Pisces, some of the signatures, the opposition to, that you can use to go in your favor is the star card, a.k.a. spending your time into something. Or whatever you're spending your time to, it could be hurting you or helping you. You also got the Ace of Pentacles. So either you can be coming up with a new way of gaining money, safety, and security, which can help or hurt you. But it's all about your intent. It's all about your intent. 
You also got the temperance card. So either you um he either you he over healing yourself or help over healing someone else could be helping or hurting you. Or it could be you have an emotional connection ties when it comes to your siblings and neighbors. And of course you got the Pisces card, the hangman. So we're gonna add this, we're gonna add them. Before we add all this up, we're gonna see um how you can utilize why you got all these cards and how you can use the moon and Libra energies to go in your favors for all Pisces seven and sentences. So how you can use use the moon and Libra energies and the um grand air time to help you out and balance you out. And that's gonna basically be doing you might have to do something that's gonna either break your heart or break someone else out. Or you're gonna have to take um the environment or the things that's in your environment and surroundings and start to utilize and incorporate that when it comes to planting these seeds. And we're gonna add this up and see what kind of energies you're gonna go for all Pisces seven and sentences. Alright, so when it comes to word on the block from the stars, you need to utilize the Venus and Leo energies to basically express yourself a little bit more. And also you got this in your in your uh, sixth house. So basically you need to utilize the sixth house energy too, but also the fifth house energies and express that. And of course, Leo falls a Libra, so get that shit up.